we're just getting ready to start working on this granite lintel. Uh, this piece of granite is a salvaged piece of granite. It came from a company called Old New England Granite. Uh, they're out of Massachusetts, and the homeowners went and picked this granite out themselves. They like the coloration, they like the story behind it. Uh, so they picked out these two uh, matching pieces, one for the hearth, and then this one for the lintel going over the fireplace. Uh, this stuff came from a place in Boston called the, uh, the Gates of Heaven School. And, uh, so when they, they salvaged the building and then they, they resell all this old weathered granite. I think these were maybe the steps from out front. So I'm just getting it set up to, to install for the lintel. And this one's gonna be uh, a little different uh, because it's a Rumford fireplace. So we're gonna, we're gonna shape this one a little different. Uh, so right here we have five feet wide and a three foot firebox. So we have one foot uh, to bear on each side of the firebox. Uh, and that's gonna span the whole way. You might wonder why it's so thick. So you might think, well, you only need four inches thick for a lintel, right? Because, you know, one, because one course of brick to go across, you only need four inches thick. But for this one, I need to build my smoke chamber on the back of it. So I asked them to get at least eight inches thick. Uh, and it's a little beyond eight inches thick, which is fine. It's gonna be where my smoke chamber goes. So this is the very top edge, okay? It's saw cut. So obviously we don't want this side to show this, so I'll be putting brickwork on top of this. Okay. This is gonna be the bottom edge that you see from the front view and the fireplace will be underneath it. So you can see it's a nice weathered look. It's kind of it's kind of worn in. It's busted on the side here, but this will all be this will all be covered up, so we're not worried about that. And then the bottom edge is actually, you know, pretty nice and weathered too. So let me roll it one more time and then you'll get the gist of what's going on here. Okay. So if you look at it like this, this is our fireplace. So this is completely upside down. And this is what our firebox looks like underneath. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take from this line here to the to the very back corner here is we're gonna round all this off. So I'm gonna cut this corner off. This is a sharp corner, okay? So what Count Rumford specified is he said you want to round the breast. He said one of the worst things you can do is have a 90 degree uh, angle here. So we're gonna we're gonna chop this corner out break it out of there and then we're going to take the grinder and we're going to round this off nice and smooth so when that smoke or sorry so when that air comes under the lintel it will round off nice and smooth uh, and then up the chimney instead of causing turbulence uh, and possibly projecting you know air current into the into the air current that's coming straight off the back wall of the fireplace causing more air turbulence uh, so it's all about laminar airflow with Rumfords. That's what we're going for here, and that's why we're going to round this off. Everything's cut out, and... I'm getting get ready to knock some of this these pieces off. I just I, I just sunk my blade in right to the arbor here, right on the corner. That's what I'm going to start with. I'm, I might I might do a little bit more after, but that's where I'm going to start. So you just cut some slices all the way down, so it's nice and easy to break this stuff out. starting to get 
we'll be able to round that right around now. Just finalizing the lintel here. Getting it pretty smooth. We've been working on it for a while. Uh, so this is the face of the fireplace. This is the very bottom edge of the fireplace. So it's just gonna, it's just gonna round into the throat area. So everything's gonna be nice and smooth. There's a couple spots on here. We got a little bit aggressive when we, um, when we busted some of those chunks out. Looks like my saw went a little deeper there. Uh, but this is pretty much what it's going to be. It's going to be pretty smooth for air to flow. And I'm probably just going to parge up some of this stuff just to, just to make it really smooth. You know, I wish it didn't bust so deep, but it did. And I don't want to grind any deeper than that. Cause I don't want to flatten it out. I want it to still be rounded. So I'm going to cut off, cut off the two ends and then we can bring it in and set it. Got Peyton here on the job today. What have you been doing today? <laughs> Just straight up. Straight up. Way to go. You got it? Yeah. Remember, your hands can't get dropped on that side here because it's going to be tight here. Yeah. I'll probably still let it talk to what are we gonna do? Can we get it like this kinda? Yeah? Yeah. It should be much to grip on. Ready? One. Hey, let's put your back. <laughs> Ready? One, two, three, go. Is it perfect though? Damn, hold on. Let me 
put it on there. Don't put it on twisted. You gotta put it on right in line. Look, see my side ended up being high, right? We didn't go down at the same rate. Okay, so you're gonna lift this side up a little bit. Get the book up. You can still get the bar under here. And we'll hold that side up while we hit this side down. That's the only one we're going to see because the mantle's covering that top, so who cares, right? We're perfect here. And then get this out of here, and then we'll put the six footer across. So this thing that indents here. Well, that's going to be covered by that's going to be covered, right? Yeah. Because the trim's coming over all that, and I'm dead. Shoot, I'm like super tight in the back. All right, we're going to get some plastic shims out of the truck, and I'm just going to. So I can't get this granite to sit where I want it to. I feel like this joint is just getting too fat. Compared to the rest of the joints, it's pretty fat. So, if you look at it, as I go along here on the brick, it goes all the way to nothing on the back. And it's wide open on the front. That's uh, because the saw, the saw cut on this is, uh, it's really off. So, I'm just gonna pull this piece off and I kind of roughly scribe a really bad line on there to what I've gotta take off get it to sit right. Otherwise this top end just keeps rolling forward. So I'm just gonna cut it. Sucks to take it off, but I'm just gonna redo it.
lift with your back, Peyton. You check for any rocks in that mud? at least.
try it. So we're here at the smoke chamber and, or I should say at the throat. This is the smoke chamber area. Uh, and this is the transition, it's pretty smooth. Grab me a light, please. So this brick here is just protruding. Uh, it's the only spot where it's really protruding. This is pretty smooth, this is smooth. And then on either side we're protruding. So instead of leave these edges, uh, I'm gonna take and do what I can to relieve this edge so it stays nice and smooth the whole way. Okay, so the granite lintel is set. Uh, the firebox is done. Damper is in. I put these black lines on here to roughly represent where the uh, where the trim is going to go. It's not quite there. It's actually going to be in a little bit, uh, probably to the six inch mark. That's at seven and a half, and I just did that so you can see. Um, basically where it would go and that the brickwork beside that isn't going to be seen. Above the lintel, I've tr transitioned uh, to the gray mud. Since this is all not going to be seen, uh, we're just laying it with gray mud. It's a lot uh, cheaper to use and it sets up faster um, as opposed to the white mud that you have to wait. So these brick are, are damp today. So if we were using the white mud on those, it wouldn't be good. So uh, let's take a look inside under the lintel. Oh, you actually, um, you might be noticing some of these brick are, are dark here. So these ones ended up a little bit orange and we were trying to just, I added a little pigment to the dye, a little dark pigment. And my test piece worked out great, but these ones, for some reason it stayed much darker so i have to redo that i'll have to kind of redo my dye and just try to they're not they're not fully dry yet but i know that they're going to be too dark so this was the first dye this was the second one and i just added a little bit too much dark all right so let's take a look up under the lintel okay give me a light here all right so this is looking up and in, and you see the dampers there, and that piece there holds the damper. Um, this is the nice rounded breast that Rumford would have talked about, how the air can now come underneath and flow uh, without causing any turbulence. Uh, so this firebox is pretty shallow uh, and it looks a little bit intimidating when you first look at it. Uh, you might think, oh wow, man, I'm, I'm burning that fire too into the house, right? But this is the design of a, of, of a Rumford fireplace. This is what Rumford wanted was to bring the fire closer into the room uh, to pr project more heat. Uh, and he said, you know, one of the things that defines uh, the depth of the fireplace, how how deep it is. Um, one of the main things that should define it is the throat. So the the channel of the throat. So so basically, he called everything from the upper firebox all the way up the throat. And the, he said the throat, the best um, the best dimension for the throat itself would have been four inches wide. Okay. Let me try to get my light stuck here. Okay, four inches wide is would be from here to here, four inches. That would be the best dimension for it. This one is four and a half. Um, he said four and a half or five would be fine, uh, but four inches was the best. So this one's four and a half because that's how the damper comes and we wanna make everything nice and smooth to the edge of the damper. Uh, and then also what he said is, you know, we want to keep this area as a, this area is not finished yet, by the way, but 
I've got this insulation all the way up and I haven't quite figured out exactly what I'm gonna do to uh, finish that off. I don't wanna leave the insulation exposed in the chamber, so I'll probably cut it and, and just mud over it a bit. But this whole area is able to expand, which is really great. Um, yeah, so one of the things that he said on the, for, as far as the smoke shelf goes, is that, um, you know, this, as it comes up from the firebox, he said there's no need to transition the shape of it to, to a square or a rectangle or whatever. Um, keep it the same dimension as the firebox and keep it raised up from, from some of the uh, stuff around it. He said there's no need to transition uh, this or slope it in because we're trying to prevent downdrafts. And I remember when he wrote his essay, it was um, in a time where we didn't have cast iron dampers and stuff, uh, you know, so it would have just been open. So we're trying to prevent the downdraft. Um, so I'm probably going to leave it down a little bit. I might slope it with the walls a little bit more. I haven't quite figured it out. I'm, I'm just trying to feel this out as I go. I've got insulation here. Um, so this, sorry, this, that brick underneath is all laid with white mud and I got gray mud back here because it's cheaper and better to use as a filler. Um, but none of that is gonna impact this brickwork with, with heat if it heats up. Um, so now um, I'm gonna keep building this wall up. I can't build it too high because I have my stainless liner that's coming down in here and I've got to parge it all up and I need room to do that. So I could probably come up a few more courses here um, and then I've got some smoke chamber mix. I can start parging these walls with a little bit. It's easy to find um, Rumford's essay. So if you have questions, like, you know, I've read, I've read his essay on fireplaces and, and I'm getting my information from, from Rumford directly. So this fireplace is built uh, pretty specifically to what he said, or what he, what, how he noted a fireplace should be built. Uh, you know, from the dimensions of the fireplace to the uh, rounding of the breast. Obviously, you know, he wasn't doing it with granite lintels because, um, you know, I have modern tools and I can grind that up. And uh, obviously he wasn't using it insulation for expansion or dampers. So like we have a lot of newer stuff, but, um, you know, I would just encourage people to go read his stuff on their own. It's not really an easy read. He's just kind of like a, a pompous, arrogant writer. Um, you know, keep in mind, he's an inventor, not a bricklayer. So he's more of a writer uh, than a fireplace builder. But, you know, he had guys working with him um, that he would he would set out to do different tasks and build things different. Uh, and then he wrote about it and, um, you know, made scientific observations. So uh, when you read him, you, you kind of understand that he's probably not the guy you'd like to have a conversation with. He's probably a bit awkward or whatever, but you can, you can tell what his intentions are, um, even as arrogant as he, he was, uh, and, and go right to what he said. Don't go buy a book that somebody else wrote about what he said. You know, if you go buy a book that's written by someone who owns a general store that knows nothing about fireplaces or bricklaying, and it's not going to convey what Rumford said, you know, this one guy years ago, uh, you know, uh, he owned a general store. His name was Restor, and he put out this book. Uh, and people people bought it up, and, and, and honestly, they think they know what a Rumford fireplace is, but they've been reading this book thinking they've been... Basically, he said it back, people back decades. Um, he probably wrote this book in the 1950s. And so there's a lot of people, they think they know what a Rumford fireplace is because they read a book written by a guy that wanted to be an author, not not a guy from the trade or experienced with fireplaces. He just, you know, he, he read Rumford's essays and he rewrote them how he wanted people to see them. 
Um, but it's just not how I see it. It's not how I interpret what he wrote. So I'm down here <clears throat> working on just getting this stuff together. And the boys are upstairs fixing the bathroom. Uh, the chimney coming through the bathroom area. And uh, can hear them rattling off up there. They're starting to argue again. It's constant with these two. So we're gonna go up and see what's going on. This is their very own project. I gave them to uh, it's their job to chisel out the mortar joints and the block work that was cracked up and to do the repointing up there. So we're gonna see what they're complaining about. They're always going on about who's better at what, who's stronger at what, who's faster at what. Super competitive. We'll see who's uh We'll see what's what. What's pay inside look? What's land inside look like first? What are we looking at? What is this pile of dog crap? Dude, it's a Taco Bell bathroom special. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> it's hot in here. Yeah. Is that all the hot air coming out? Coming out of your mouth? I don't know. Ben, what are you looking like in here? Oh my god. Can we get any rocks in this? I know, there's a lot of pebbles in that sand. Just cut it bigger if you have to. Boy, it's hot up here. Yeah. Okay, so you got it almost filled up. This chimney is disgusting. The way they built this is just like awful. So instead of ripping it down, we decided just to um, grind out the joints, fill them up. And then uh, after we're done, after they show me how good they are at repointing, since this is their project. We'll grind it out and redo it again. <laughs> We're gonna skim coat everything afterwards anyway. What are you guys arguing about? How Lynn's a simple jack. <laughs> Payton owes no. me money for skis and now he's saying that he doesn't want to. You owe him money? I don't owe money. How did you use that? I don't owe him money. For the entire season. I said I would buy your skis in the summer. Yeah. Wait, the summer. you're selling your skis to him? Yeah, we made an agreement, $450 yeah, for like my skis, because they were $900 when I got them. We made the agreement, I said you can use them for the season if he buys them over the summer, and he said yes, and now he's saying I don't want to buy them. So you're done skiing? No, well, I can't ski anymore. Why? Because it, I signed a contract in my running thing, and it said I can't ski. So, so you gotta skiing. take care of yourself now? Yeah. No more stupid stuff? Exactly. Payne, who's better at skiing anyway? Mm -hmm. Huh? Me? You? Yeah. Is it just that easy? It's just not close to nature, dude. This kid painted with 270 on. What? Then you watched me. He can't even backflip either. Dude, he can't even backflip <laughs> he, at least he tried a backflip. I never saw a video of you trying he one. He always lands on his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys are clowns. So I'm just working out what I gotta do with this smoke chamber to make everything work. And I've got this damper that's, uh, you know, set on that line putty mortar. But I know that's not gonna hold it, so I have to come up with a way to, uh, you know, get this thing to stay. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna use my chamber coat mix, the uh, the Formula 51 mix, and I'm gonna I'm gonna build up over this edge here to kind of help hold that damper. And then I'll slope everything away. I'll build up over the edge and I'll slope everything away. Um, and that will, that stuff is like um, a lot weaker mix and it's made to expand. So I'm thinking if this damper gets real hot, it's not gonna just, you know, wanna break brickwork outward, it will expand into that stuff and if it does hairline crack around it it's fine as long as they don't have like mortar up against the back here where it could push directly on this brick wall 
when it expands. So I'm gonna have brick on its side behind here because I don't have much room. Uh, I gotta come up with a, you know, a couple courses like that. Um, and still keep in mind this damper, if it pushes on this brick, it's not gonna push on the front wall because I've got the insulation here. So then at this point, I have to put a header course in to cut to cover that up and you know header course is going to look like this sticking out like that because i have to tie back into the smoke chamber right where we broke it open i have to tie back in but it has to be smooth so i'm going to angle the cut on the end here to taper into into where that brickwork has to be this is my test piece of foil back insulation um, just checking to see if it would adhere to the brick with the same uh, adhesive spray as we use on the stainless liners. Uh, so this is quarter inch insulation and the homeowner's thinking they want to wrap it, uh, wrap this whole chimney because they're gonna do uh, raised paneling around the whole thing to make it look old and all this brickwork is gonna be covered up, but to gain extra room, especially on the front and the top, we're gonna to put this stuff on while the homeowner's gonna put it on. And I feel that joint. So the homeowner's gonna put it on before they put their probably three quarter inch plywood over top of that. So they're gonna have nailers everywhere for their paneling. And I was just, just just testing to see if this would work. Um, and, you know, I sprayed the back of the insulation, stuck it right on, and it's working. So, you know, he could wrap this. I ordered him a four-foot tall uh, roll of it. So he can get this in two pieces and wrap it right around with spray adhesive and then just, you know, anchor his, his plywood on, three-quarter inch Advantac plywood. And as long as the, you know, the, the fasteners aren't where the heat is, the fasteners will stay off to the side out of the way where there's no heat. Uh, it seems like a really good idea to, to do something like this, to be able to achieve uh, better clearances. The code doesn't allow for this type of stuff for, for creativity and stuff like this. Obviously, uh, this method it would, is superior to, to what the code would list. Uh, I don't know what an inspector would think about that. Uh, we don't have an inspector coming to look at this, so we're just going to do it overkill, and I'm sure it will be fine. Um, I think it's a clever idea, and I think that they should allow for creativity like that in, in the code somehow. All right, so this is to demonstrate the difference between uh, mortar mixes. Uh, none of this brick wall is going to be seen, so I figured this would be a good place to do this. Um, I'm using a Type N mortar, uh, so I buy the Type N masonry cement. It already has lime in it, and then you just add sand, so it's like a... I, I don't know how they... I don't know exactly how they mix it. It's just like a Portland, Portland lime mix, and then you add the sand. So uh, we did a four-to-one mix with both of these mortars and you can see that this one down here is lighter than the one that's up here and then it's and then it's back to lighter again so this stretch of uh gray or mortar we didn't add lime to it so i always like to add hydrated lime with my mix and it just makes it a lot more workable so if you get type s uh, Mason's lime, hydrated lime, and add your own. They don't put enough in the bag mix. So if you put it in there, it just makes, like joining it, it makes it so much smoother. Um, and and the sprayer mud, it's like, it's more gritty. And the, you can see the little particles, they kind of want to, they want to fall out of it and kind of pull open more. So it's more open and now I come down here and it's smoother. So the lime makes it stick a little bit more and then it also makes it a lot nicer for joining. Um, so if you wanna have easier mud to work with, with easier joining, if you just add a little bit of hydrated lime to it, uh, it goes a long way. 
Just finished installing my header course and this other course under it. Um, show you how it looks inside. I haven't tidied anything up yet, but I bevel cut the back of these last two courses. So this, this was the last flat course that went in and I'll, I bevel cut those bricks. So it's nice and smooth. I'm getting to my point where where I'm right in line with the old the old brickwork. So from now on, I should be able to just, uh, might have to just lean my brick a little bit, but I should be able to follow that line right up to the top. And so now I can start working on the smoke chamber mix. I didn't tidy this stuff up or parge it because I'm going to parge that smoke chamber mix right over all of this. So I'll just clean it up so there's not stuff hanging in there. And then once it starts to dry, I can put my smoke chamber mix on there. And uh, so I'm going to start that, probably start the whole, I'll do like a first coat of the smoke chamber mix. So it's not, so I don't have as much to do when I put the liner in. And then I'm going to, I have to leave this open. So what I'm going to do is probably try to infill this a little bit and then infill this a little bit and just leave like a little spot here that I'll have to fill in after the liner's done. That's what I'm thinking. Same thing over there. So I'll put the line up in a minute. My trowel's in the way here. Is it gonna work? Oh yeah. Good enough, huh? Tuck that in, that will stay. Uh -huh. I'm just gonna finish a couple over here. Okay, nice and full. Not a lot. Pull one in right here, okay. I'm going to put this one in. Okay. 
can stop now. How does it feel to be the most popular YouTuber in our town? <laughs> most subscribed. You think so? Oh, absolutely. There's gotta be some sleepers out there. No. No? 